Alfredo Aragin is just one of the most remarkable painters. He has found a way to connect with his heritage as well as his life here. very long time resident of the Northwest and in the course of that time has developed a superlative national and international reputation. I feel the child very much in his paintings because you know when we were children we really felt the miracle of the world, and I think that sense of miracles very much alive in his paintings. When I was a small child, my maternal grandfather thought that I had a lot of talent by doing a lot of small drawings and paintings. And when I was about eight or nine years old, he convinced the fine arts school in my hometown of Morelia to allow me to take classes with the grown-ups. What that did actually was encourage me to become an artist because I love the school. I thought I would want to be an artist, but it, I wasn't very much encouraged by my father who had a developing company and, Mexico City and uh, why don't you become some architect or engineer or something else. So when I immigrated to the United States, my first thought was to go to the University of Washington and sign in the architecture department. And I got drafted and I was sent to Korea. And on my return, an another student from Peru said, why don't you go into interior design? That has more art. So I moved to the art department where they were teaching interior design and um, when I went to a convention at the Olympic Hotel of Interior Designers, I realized that I was uh, one of the things that I would have to learn is how to sell and I didn't like that and so I uh, said, well, why don't I take painting because um, that's what I always wanted. You know, in graduate school, I was having a real hard time. Um, I, I thought that uh, you're supposed to be very innovative, and everybody was, you know. And, and I didn't think that uh, any of my background uh, was useful for what was happening there. And so um, the first year, I, I was almost flunking, and. Uh, they had a visiting professor from California, Elmer Bischoff, who was a famous artist. And I signed in for his class, and he uh, insisted of um, coming over to see my earlier work that I was doing. I said, I work on top of this restaurant. Do you want to go there, Mexican restaurant? He said, sure. And he came to my little tiny room, and I pulled out a lot of the things that I was doing. And he said to me, you don't know what you're doing right now, do you? And I said, I'm really having a hard time. And he says, what, what you were doing before reflects some of your culture and who you are. But now you, there's nothing in there that shows any love for it or something like that. And he says, you have to go back. And I said, they're going to flunk me. And he says, what do you want to be, a good artist or a good instructor? And I said, Gee, I really want to be a good artist. And he said, well, let him flunk you then and go on and do what was something that was important to you. And so I listened to him, and that was one of the things that uh, set me into my own thing and believe more in myself, you know. 
And then I got my master's degree because um, I thought I might be able to teach because I was still afraid of my father. You're gonna starve, you know, you won't be able to sell your work. After 300 applications for, for three years, years, I got an offer for a part-time job in El Paso, Texas, and I thought, I'm not going to El Paso, Texas. I love the Pacific Northwest. I want to stay here, and I'm going to seriously gonna become a good painter. And so all my efforts went into that. Alfredo's early art was, it kind of seemed to float you know, the, the, the figures in the, in the paintings. Um, and I can remember kind of it being very sexually provocative. Um, it, it was very far from where he ended up going, but it did have some of the design elements, some of the love of pattern and color. And I think that he really diverged from uh, what he was getting at the University of Washington and went quite often on his own path. By the time I graduated in 1969, I had enough of school and I decided now I'm going to be on my own. I was, uh, I, I was working at a Mexican restaurant and partying a lot. I was um, a very famous alcoholic because I, I had a lot of incredible stories that happened to me, you know. But in those days, he, he was drinking, so that made him even more Vesuvian, you know, Promethean, shall we say and uh, he loved to roar. Then I was sort of lost because I kept on hearing all these professors' opinions about so many different things that I decided I, I'm not gonna be able to paint. So for about a year or two, I began to just do drawings with pen and ink. And actually that influenced a lot of my patterns. And I was doing all these line drawings um, uh, and I said I could never paint these because of the scale. It was so delicate and rhythmical and nice to paint with, to do with a brush and with a, sm a small pen. Um, and then I decided to go back to paint, and I, that's when I painted that painting, Emerald Island, that uh, is a pattern and very abstract. He is this interesting character in that he is certainly from here and of here in a certain way, but also being from Mexico, he brings, he somehow has brought both worlds together. So I think for me, Alfredo is a juncture of two worlds. He takes this very, what I call a traditional pattern painting. And in his paintings, you'll see leopards, you'll see parrots, but you also see um, people and places right here that he's used that uh, particular style of painting to interpret his second culture, which is here in the United States. I liken Alfredo's work to really very little. I, I see him as really distinct. While he lives in the Northwest, his colors vibrate with amazing sensation. Uh, I mean, really the colors of Mexico, the intricate patterns of, of much Mexican tradition. And he has retained his own warmth and heat, I would say, and exuberance, um, and conveys it in nearly all of his work. And even the more muted palette that he occasionally uses is not, to my mind, a northwest gray, but maybe a desert, <laughs> desert rose and tan. And certainly always a sense of history, because so often in his patterns, you can look and see something like, it might remind you of ancient American stone carving and, and hieroglyphics and those kinds of figures is always so often embedded in it. 
and it always invites you just to look, look deeper. It's very antithetical to the Northwest palette, the gray skies, the, the gloomy Northwest school. So he does stand apart in that regard. He does often use a lot of primary colors, blues and reds are among his favorites. And I think that's part of the attraction of the work, the bold palette. The thing that's really great about his palette is that he doesn't hold back. He's not saying, oh God, I'm just gonna use a little bit of this turquoise and see if it works. He just, if it's turquoise, it's gonna be turquoise. If it's gonna be azure and red and vibrant purple, he goes all the way so that you're as convinced that he is, that this is the color of that world. And inside of the paintings, there's a color logic and it works. I think as long as he believes in it and able to pull it off, the viewer is able to be with him in that uh, expression and enjoy it in the context in which it's given. I feel when you look at a painting of his, you really see the universe, the cosmos, in a different way. All the particles uh, come together of color and oxygen and light and beings. And you feel that these uh, creatures, you know, are more friendly than you might if you didn't meet them in Alfredo's paintings. He domesticates them in that way, but in the, they really are still wild also. You can still feel their wildness, and yet it's an approachable wildness. I think he's a kind of Zen painter, because uh, everywhere you look, uh, it's alive. And what it's saying to you is there is nothing that is not alive, and every moment is alive. They're almost animistic in the sense that everything is alive. It's not just the animal or the hummingbird or the even racing horse, but all of the context in which that animal is placed, everything vibrates with a living quality. What happens is that uh, when you see some of my large canvases of jungles and landscapes and things like that, that's when I have the most fun because I have all these little ghosts that are unintentionally pop out. So when I start painting, um, I actually do a, an expressionistic painting very loose where you feel really good just uh, painting all these different hues of browns and blues and uh, they mix together in certain areas. And then as I continue, I start doing line drawing. And things that come out very spontaneously are the most interesting. And those are the ones I keep. And then I start sort of eliminating with filling up things that I don't find as interesting, but they become sort of background and pattern, you know. The portraits of Alfredo, when, when they emerge from this densely, densely patterned uh, ground and foreground, I think take on a, some of the spiritual, symbolic quality that we know is in every person in some mysterious way. We never really know another person. And because they're not literal, 
it suggests that we look further, or, we, or it evokes um, perhaps the character or more of the context. It, it, it makes us try to imagine that other dimension of a person that we can never really know. And in a figure like Frida Kahlo that he uses so frequently, it has become iconic to the fad point in this country now since her just rediscovery some 30 plus years ago. It recognizes that her image has become an icon and al allows that, but also provides the possibility of more imaginative realms for us to explore as we look. Frida was my choice um, to use a feminine power because the jungle is feminine. And traditionally, women have always taken care of the earth and the gardens and the herbs and things like that. And the goddesses of Mexico were part of that same thing, like Xochiquetzal, the, the flower goddess, you know. And so um, I needed a model for that, and Frida Kahlo came into the picture when I saw a movie of her, of her early work. And she wasn't only beautiful, but she had pets, which I, they fit so well with my jungle paintings. And she also had uh, the dresses that she wore, Mexican uh, dresses from Tehuantepec and all over Mexico, had flowers in it and patterns. So she was perfect. In the case of the influence of my culture, that my culture has in my work, it, it shows more in my portraits. And uh, that's because when I was young, um, that's where I learned in school, and it applies very much to some of the situations of justice and um, that, that, that have come up recently, you know. It seems like, especially right now, where the problem of immigration, um, uh, these uh, heroes are part of that culture, you know. But with my ecological thing, it's most, more like when I was a child, uh, going to the jungle, you know, and going to the wilderness and uh, those experiences that are so rich and vivid come into my paintings a lot. And in that case, I think that more of my experience living down there than my culture. When it comes down to portraits, it's more than I have to choose the icons that influence my life as a young man. Art for me is an integral part of my life, you know. I, uh, it's not sort of like a hobby, it's not sort of like a job. It is who I am. It's like good food, it's like, like a real nice glass of wine or something at the end of the day that you feel tired because you've been doing something you like to do and you feel real pleased with yourself. And days that, um, that I spend away from my painting um, are difficult because um, I am sort of feel kind of lost, you know. And so it's wonderful that I can travel uh, short periods of time. I don't like to spend too much time away from my studio. And to have to, this humble, messy studio, to me, is like heaven, you know. I, 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 I don't have any conflicts, I don't have any television, and I just submerge myself into this other world that is so benign, and that's how I like it. think that Alfredo has a way of, in his pattern painting, 
breaking it down so that you see the process of his search, his trying to see the thing that's behind the thing, trying to see the component parts that make up the thing. And it's like anything, it's like you know that when your eye is doing this incredible sort of mixing and making sense out of an image, uh, because that's what your eye and your brain are trained to do, but if you relax your eye and your brain, you see things sort of dissolve. They dissolve and then they come back together. They dissolve and come back together. And I think that that kind of um, effect on the retina and on the eye is something that, a kind of an alchemy that Alfredo's been able to, over time, through experience and absolute hard work, um, create in his tableaus. He gives it a beautiful form and energy. I think energy is one of the things you have to feel when you're looking at his paintings. I just paint uh, into the canvas and I sort of like uh, meditation, you know. Sometimes it's, I am so deeply involved with the painting that I don't even hear the telephone. And my wife is right next painting, but we're in different worlds, you know. I always have inspiration, you know. In the morning, I, I go and walk the dog and get inspired by uh, whatever we see in the lake or whatever. But it's always there. And uh, when I come to my studio, I go into this trance and everything happens, you know. So it's not, uh, it will be unfortunate for me to think that I'm waiting for that thing that jolt of inspiration to turn me on to something when it's basically hard work. All I do is paint, you know. My palette is my painting because I mix the colors right into the painting, you know. And I like how then their neat color starts coming through, you know. Here you have browns and yellows and things. I had a lot of yellow colors. So when I paint over that yellow, you have a different kind of color and feelings on it, you know. Alfredo struggled too, to find how he could be beloved you know, both of his father, uh, who didn't really, uh, you know, know, uh, you know, what this child would amount to. And Alfredo had really to earn his love. And now his father and he are so very close. And how did it happen? Through his art. His father saw his art and saw Alfredo's soul and the tenderness in those paintings. He said, I made such a terrible mistake. I didn't give you anything. And look what you had to do to school to survive in another country and to be able to make it that way when I, with all the language. And, and I said, you know what, Dad? You have given me the best thing yet, you, because all, I always wanted your love and now I got it. And to me, that is the best you could have given me, you know, because when I started feeling that you love me, I, the excuse of all the strife we had together disappeared and I quit drinking and smoking and all my creativity went right into doing paintings and doing things like that. And so you left me your love and to me that's the most important thing you could have ever done, you know. I'm so glad you lived to be 102 so I could feel your love, you know. So it's really wonderful. Now I feel he's very collected. He's, he's uh, like a locomotive. He really is uh, so uh, focused on getting his work done and doing the very best work he can do. I love that uh, sense of him, his focus.
So things continually change and I am just so happy and pleased that maybe at the end of my life I have gotten to where I am, you know. That uh, And I had a lot of fun drinking, you know, and uh, doing real crazy things. And uh, maybe that's the reason that all those things have helped form me the way I am. And my work probably reflects a lot of those frustrations as well as a lot of uh, pleasing things. Alfredo does a wonderful and masterful job at showing us what happens when you have daytime dreams that you give to everybody. Now here I am, you know, uh, I just turned 73 years old of age and I had just uh, an exhibition at the National Portrait Gallery at the Smithsonian and they acquired one of my paintings. Uh, so now I'm in two of the Smithsonian collections, the National Museum of American Art and the National Portrait Gallery, which makes me real proud. I go to the mountain side of the house to cut saplings and clear a view to snow on the mountain. But when I look up, saw in hand, I see a nest clutched in the uppermost branches. I don't cut that one. I don't cut the others either. Suddenly, in every tree, an unseen nest where a mountain would be. So he's making you feel the connectedness of everything in the world. That is, that we can't do without the tree. We can't do without the nest. That every tree is a possible home for a bird. And that would be a recognition that Alfredo has in all of his paintings, really. That we can't do without any of nature's creatures, or its trees, or its mountains. I always trusted that no matter how bad things were getting, the end was going to be good, you know? <laughs> and maybe that's one of the reasons that I'm so optimistic about it.